it open, Mr. Shane. It gives that careless look. So important to good dressing. With me, things are too tough to look careless. Well, 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 if it isn't my old friend, the private dick. <laughs> private investigator to you. Mike, you're looking fine. Wonderful. If you looked any better, you'd have to be twins. I'm glad to see you, boy. Getting everything you want? Well, I was just... Oh, talking. it's a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. You're sure dressed to kill. Uh, say, isn't this the suit I told you to put away for another customer? You can't sell that suit. It, well, all right, so I'll lose another customer. <laughs> you're worth it, Mike. You're worth it. Mm, does it fit like a glove? It should fit like a suit. Like a... <laughs> <laughs> you panic me, Mike, from head to foot. Now, look, Smiley, this has got to be right because I'm buying it to please a dame. Any dame that's got the taste to go out with you will be crazy about that suit. I'm not going out with her. I'm going to marry you. Marry her? Well, that's marvelous. Wonderful. Congratulations, Mike. Congratulations. This is the suit, my boy. The preacher won't be able to look at anything else. Mm -mm. Did you uh, quote him a price on this? No, sir. Then I'll even do better. The complete outfit with a pair of shoes, thirty-seven fifty, and we throw in the wedding ring. And if you buy an overcoat, you get a hat and a membership in our Christmas club, which entitles you to a credit slip for five dollars, good on any purchase over fifty dollars, if made before Christmas. On track seven. And all I want down from you, Mike, is a measly ten spot. I'll give you two bucks and my old suit. But that thing, the moles would be ashamed to build a nest in that. Uh, make it five. Two bucks. And I won't bother to take the police whistle and the Gene Autry gun. Yeah, here, here, hold on, just a minute. What about your security? What do you mean, security? I've always paid you. I got an important case coming up any day now. Well, all right. I'll take a chance. Goodbye, Mike. Good luck. I hope your marriage works out. What do you mean, works out? Oh, so few of them do. Mike! Hey, Mike! This case you got coming up, is it dangerous? Why? Well, you got to go through such red tape to get a suit back from the morgue. Hello, Sam. Hello, Mr. Shane. Man, that suit's a killer. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Hiya, Mike. Oh, hello, Jack. Hey, take it easy with that. That's gonna be personal property in a couple of hours. <laughs> well, today's the big day, eh? Yes, sir. Yeah, I told Joan it'd be okay if she was a little late. Oh, that's fine, Jack. That helps a lot. Oh, Mike. Yeah? Have you thought it over? <laughs> sure, I thought it over. Why? I'm a married man. I talk from experience. I'd rather put two bucks on a horse than on a marriage license. You get a better run for your dough. Well, well, thanks for the advice. Hiya, Mike. Hello. Say, uh, I'm sorry about that tip I gave you yesterday. Yeah, he ran a bang up eighth, charging in the stretch. Hello, Mike. Hi, Hi boys. Hey, yeah. I hear you're getting married. Yes, you got any objections? No, two can live as cheap as one, but if you ask me, it's worth the difference to stay single. <laughs> That's very funny. Hey, Brennan. Is Joan in? Yes, Mike. Good. I say, I hear you're getting married. Yes. I'm getting married. Now, just one crack out of you. Come on, just one crack out of Gee, it could happen to anybody. Well, here comes Max Aleron. Better duck. Oh, Mike. Can I put the lug on you for a couple of bucks and a little short for my rent? Now, look, the last time you clipped me, you went out and got loaded. You're crazy. Some guy bought me a couple of beers, but I wasn't loaded. No, you weren't loaded. You were just to that state where the sober guys looked awfully silly. Okay, Shane. If that's the way you feel about it. It's the way I feel about it. Hello, Mike. Get in that contraption and get going. Say, I hear you're getting married. Come in. Hey, John. Look, nifty. Everything but the neon sign, huh? Well, now you look like something. Yeah. You know, Gus had a suit like that once. Now, look, let's get this thing understood. Will you please stop throwing that two-bit hoofer up to me? Well, I just want you to look nice. You don't get married every day. Hmm. Not to me, you don't. See, the bridesmaids are tossing off a little brawl for us after the show. What bridesmaids? The girls and the daddy let me light your cigar number. Oh, that's swell. Say, uh, how about a cup of coffee? You can't get married in an empty stomach. I saved you a cup. Good. You got the ring? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see it. I got it. The shame never forgets. What'd you do with a cracker, Jack? Hey, hey, don't try it on. That's bad luck. 
couldn't be any worse. The wedding license is so old now, it's out of print. Ah, uh, quit grabbing, Johnny. I've had my coffee. We're set. How about a couple of bucks for flowers? A couple of bucks, sure. Yeah, there's one buck. I don't want George Washington to get lonesome. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? I didn't hear anything. That's funny. I could have sworn I heard somebody scream. Somebody's always screaming around this flop house. Ah! I'll be right back, honey. Mike! Hey, Mike! Oh. Hey, Emily, what's all about? Stage, this little melodrama certainly had cracked charms in their belfry. Oh. Oh. Come on, Emily, pull yourself together. Oh. That's a good girl. Say now, who is this dame? Miss Vance. Miss Vance? Desiree Vance. Oh. <laughs> Look, you mop up your tears. Run downstairs and tell Brennan to come right up here, will you? Yes. He's gonna love this. You're gonna be busy. Look, how much dough will you pay for an exclusive on a double murder? I'll give you five minutes head start over the cops. I'll tell you what it's worth after you give me the dope. Lou Lathrop, the broken down producer, and Desiree Vance were knocked off last night. Mm. Well, that's worth a hundred bucks. Who did it? Well, what do you know? All I know is that the joint up here looks like the second act curtain from Macbeth. <laughs> yeah, they must have been given some kind of a banquet or something. They were both in costume. No, I don't know what it was for or anything about it yet. Listen, Mike, if you dig up the murderer for me, exclusive, I'll give you 400 more. Oh, you got yourself a deal, sweetheart. As soon as I get any hot copy, you'll get it. But you send over that 100 bucks right away, will you? Good. Oh, oh. 100 simoleons. <laughs> Right here, baby. If you think you can keep me waiting around this hotel while you go chasing screams, you're ah! Isn't it terrific? I've made a hundred bucks already, and there's 400 more coming up as soon as I put my finger on the killer. Well, it's Niagara Falls and all the trimmings for us, baby. It did. But sure, it's no wax museum. Now, you get out of here before the police come. I don't want you mixed up in this. Come on. Oof, gives me the creeps. Oh, a cherry coke will fix you up. Now, 
I'll have this taken care of in a couple of hours. You keep the preacher away. Go on. Oh, it's you. What happened, Mike? You're in luck, friend. A couple of murders. In luck? Do you know what that means to this hotel? Sure. You'll be all over the front pages tomorrow morning. The public will forget about that gambling raid you had last month. What a mess. Funny, Lathrop's been in this suite since 1915, and there's never been anything like this before. Now we'll have to get that chair reupholstered. You can't take bloodstains out of that material. I gotta call the police. Well, tell them not to take the bodies through the lobby this time. Keep your eye open for this bird. I got a tip he's in town. Inspector Pearson speaking. Oh, hello, Mike. You don't say. You don't say. Well, glad to hear you haven't lost your sense of public responsibility. We'll be right over. Oh, Mike, don't pick up the murderer before we get there. Come on, Al, a double murder at the hotel due north. The business is picking up, Chief. They're coming in pairs now. Yeah, what are you doing? I always said this chair belonged here. Hey, Brennan, you got any idea what this costume ball was all about? Must have something to do with that hit show he produced years ago. What makes you think that? They're wearing the same costumes. There's the program. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Desiree Vance. Oh, she's dead. Julian Davis. Say, so you know anything about him? He was in that show. You should have been a detective. Oh, David Earl. Say, that name sounds familiar. He's the real estate operator. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember him. You know anything about Angus Duncan and Faye Dalrymple? Never heard of him. Oh, Max Aileron. Say, I never knew that he worked for Lathrop. Martin Larkin. Helen Hollis and Carlo Ralph. You know them? No. Did you see any of the people who came up here last night? No, I had a light day yesterday. Only worked from 10 to 10. Lathrop's parties never started till 11. I guess just four of them showed up. How do you know that? Only four of the places have been used. Smart, huh? That's right. You know, Mike, the Vance woman used to come here a lot. Last week, when I was walking down the hall and happened to glance through the transom, I saw Lathrop giving her some money. She was mad about something. If you want my opinion, it's a murder and a suicide. She killed him and then shot herself. Yeah, I guess you're right. Then she hung the rifle back up in the wall, huh? Rifle? What's that got to do with it? Well, just for the files. Lathrop was killed with a rifle and a sweetie with a revolver. How do you know that? Well, the way Lathrop's head is mussed up. Couldn't have been done by anything but a dum-dum bullet from a rifle. And that baby has been fired recently. Whereas a revolver, on the other hand, makes a small, neat hole like the one in the Vance dam's head. Well, that complicates things. You know any sleight of hand? I used to know a match trick. Everybody liked it. Well, you'll have to show it to me sometime. I've got to go downstairs and make up Lathrop's closing bill. Don't forget about telling them not to bring the bodies through the lobby. I'll have them shipped out parcel post.
This is it, all right. Stay in the hall and don't let anybody in, especially the reporters. Welcome to our Chamber of Horrors, Inspector. Hello, Mike. Appreciate your calling us right away. That's okay. Sure you haven't touched anything? Nope. Only the Coronas. Here, have one. Thanks. Shot. In the head. What are all these places? What are they advertising, anyway? Well, it isn't vitamin B1. What's this? Oh, I found that on Lathrop's head. The murderer must have put it there after he shot him. What'd he do that for? Maybe he liked the Airedales, I don't know. I had a dog like that once. He'd eat anything. Was very fond of children. Say, did you notice that only four of these places were used? No, I didn't. Gotta keep your eyes open, Shane. Well, maybe the killers are so nervous they couldn't eat, huh? That's right. There's your cast of characters, Inspector. The murderer is usually the one near the bottom. The last one here. Oh, wise guy. Hey, that's funny. Carlo Ralph, who played the dog, is the last one on the program. And that ties up with the dog head. You catch on quick. Inspector! 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 What is it, Al? Look at that bed. What about it? It hasn't been slept in. Go on. Well, it, it seems that Lathrop didn't go to bed last night. Yeah, I guess after being murdered, he was too tired to come into bed. How did you get in here? I told my... Who are you? I'm David Earl. Oh, you were in that show, Sweethearts of Paris. Yes. What are you doing here? Well, I had an appointment with Lathrop at 11 o'clock this morning. I walked into the living room and saw... Then I heard voices in here. What? How did you get in here, Mr. Earl? I came through the special entrance from the theater next door. Special entrance? What kind of... Uh, why, uh, where is it? Over here. Lathrop built this to get to the theater without going through the street. You see, he owned it before it was turned into a burlesque house. Yeah. Say, why did you come up through the theater? Well, my office is in 45th Street. It's shorter to come this way. I've been doing it for 20 years. Is this door kept locked? Lathrop never locked it, to my knowledge. That's fine. Anybody from the theater could have walked in here last night. Now that you're here, Mr. Earl, maybe you can explain a few things to us regarding this setup. Well, this is pretty sad business for me, Inspector. I worked for Lathrop a long time. We were very close pals. Were you at the party last night? Yes. Who else was here? Well, it was Julian Davis, Desiree Vance, Lathrop, and myself. Why was the table set for eight? Lathrop set places for all the cast, whether they were dead or alive, for sentimental reasons. So what's Davis doing now? He's a stockbroker. Oh. Were you the last to leave? No, Davis was here when I left. Somebody else. When does the balloon go up? Hey! What do you think you're doing, bud? Eh? I said, what are you doing here? Oh, uh, Mr. Lithrow pays me extra to clean up for him. Hello, Otto. Hello, Mr. Shin. He's the doorman at the theater. How do you know? My girl's in the show. Oh. Get this. I don't want anything touched around here. Nothing. Until I'm through with the investigation. Investigation? Yeah, investigation. Lathrop and Desiree Vance were murdered here last night. Murdered? Yeah. Say, how did you get in here anyway? Through the theater entrance. Now, wait a minute. We've been standing in front of that door. But I came through this door, directly into the kitchen. You mean there's another? He's right. This leads to the passageway, too. Say, what is this, an apartment or a fun house? You know anything about the party here last night? Uh, well, uh, after my 11 o'clock round, I came up here and fixed the food, like Mr. Lathrop told me. Did you serve at the party? Uh, no, uh, I had to get back to the theater. Was that the last time you saw Lathrop? No, I came up here again to bring some ice after everybody left the theater. Was there anyone here besides Lathrop and Desiree Vance? There was a woman here. She was talking to Mr. Lathrop. Did you hear anything she said? Uh, no, uh, I couldn't see. Her bag was to the service window. See? Couldn't... Do you have to see to hear anything? Well, he's almost deaf. He reads your lips. Ah. Who was the woman? Huh? I said, who was the woman? 
I don't know. I never saw her before. Otto, could you describe her or tell us anything about her? Oh, well, she uh, had on a, a hat. What kind of a hat? With what they're wearing nowadays, just you try and describe a hat. Uh, was she tall or short? What? Was she tall? Never mind. I'll get around to you later. Just keep your mouth shut about this murder. Go on. I'll get it. Never mind. I'll get it. No, I'll, I'll get, get it. it. I'll... Why don't you watch where you're going? Where's the phone? I don't know. Wait a minute. I'll answer the phone. I'm running this case. Well, all right. I was only trying to help. He's getting sore. Hello? Yes? Lou? This is Connie Earl. Father hasn't come home all night. I thought perhaps he'd found out about us. I've been terribly worried. Yeah, I know all about that, honey. Look, don't bother me now, will you? I'm busy. I'll be down in a couple of minutes. Who was it? Who's that screwball dame of mine? She's getting impatient. We're supposed to get hitched this morning. Well, congratulations. Stop using that phone! <laughs> no, oh, uh, sit down, Mr. Earl. Sorry I got sidetracked. It's quite all right. Want to ask you a few more questions? Did Lynn uh, Evans ever attend these parties? She came to the first one, but I haven't seen her since. Who's Lynn Evans? She was a chorus girl in Lathrop's show. Later, it was sweet on her till Desiree Vance came into the picture. Do you think the murderer might have been a member of the cast? I haven't even started thinking. That's right, Inspector. Quiet. Say, how did you happen to find this massacre in the first place? Well, you see, my girl lives on the floor below. I heard Emily the maid screaming, so I came up. And the maid was the first one to see them. That's right. Get her up here, Al. Oh, that's all right, Al. I'm going now. I'll tell her. Oh, Mr. Earl. Your daughter's name is Connie, isn't it? Why, yes, but uh, what's that got to do with this? Oh, nothing, just that she's very pretty. I've seen her picture in the rotor section. Hey, what are you driving at? Take a look at those guns on the wall inside, Inspector. I think one of them killed Lathrop. Oh, hello, Mike. Hello, Joe. It's all yours. They said there were two of them dead. That's right. You're right in the middle of a boom town. <laughs> Oily, wait a minute. The police want to talk to you. Now, there's nothing to be nervous about. All you have to do is answer their questions. Mr. Shane, I will... Stop worrying, will you, Emily? They don't know that you're Lynn Evans. Hey, Brennan, anybody asked for me? Over there. Have they found out anything yet? No, they're waiting for Professor Quiz. You from the Observer? Yeah. Well, I'm Mike Shane. Oh. Here's a valentine from the editor. Mm hmm With loving kisses, eh? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Hey, wait a minute. Where's the rest of the dope? As soon as I get anything to peddle, I'm playing along with you guys. Just as long as you keep me dizzy seeing ten spots in front of my eyes. Thanks very much, Mr. Earl. We can reach you at your office any time? Yes, of course. Ah. Well... They've been dead about 10 hours. Lathrop was shot with a rifle. It could have been that one on the wall. Have that rifle checked out. Right. And the Vance woman with a revolver. Looks like you got a tough case on your hands, Inspector. The tougher they come, the better we like them. Say, if you see any reporters downstairs, keep quiet. I don't want the papers to get hold of this before I'm ready. Sure. Hey, Jasper. You're supposed to be on duty. Yes, sir. You, Miss Earl? Yes? I thought you'd show up when you couldn't call back. What do you mean? Hey, driver, once around the block. Look here, what's the meaning of all this? Uh, take it easy, Miss Earl. I only want to talk to you. Who are you? I'm Michael Shane, private investigator. Go on. I just talked to you over the phone from Lathrop's apartment. What happened? I, I was disconnected. Well, nothing much except that Lathrop and Desiree Vance were knocked off last night. 
you mean? Yeah. And right now, Inspector Pearson is pouring a lot of heat on your father. My father wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, I don't know. He seems to be a pretty good liar. He's up there telling the police what great pals he and Lathrop were. That's right. They were good friends. Ah, uh, now, wait a minute. That doesn't tally with the story you just gave me over the phone. My father was a little upset about losing interest in my career, but... If anybody should get down off a hack and ask you, your old man had plenty of motive for killing Lathrop. Well, if a motive is the only thing you're looking for, I happen to know that Julian Davis had plenty. He embezzled Lathrop out, out of... of 28,000 slugs, yes. How did you know? A private investigator has to keep a jump ahead of the cops. Then the police don't know about our telephone conversation? You don't have to worry about your father yet. Say, do you know where this Julian Davis lives? Yes, a Central Park Manor. Hey, bud. Well, here's where I get out. Oh, uh... By the way, I advise you not to go back to the hotel. Your father will be home by the time you get there. Goodbye, Mr. Shane. Uh, 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 one more thing. You and your father better get your story straight before the police start asking any more questions. Bye-bye. Hello. Also, how are you today? Fine, thanks. Mr. Davis in? Mr. Davis, he got company on the inside. Will you come in, please? Yeah, thanks. What a name I am giving, please. Mr. Shane. Also, just one moment, please, Mr. Shane. Okay, also. No, not the also. Fukumoto. <laughs> if this gets out, you know what will happen. What is it? Pleasing to telling you, uh, Mr. Slane to see you, sir. I don't know any Mr. Slane. It might be well worth your while to know him, Mr. Slane. Shane. I'm... Without too much ado, to what do we owe this rude intrusion? I'm a private investigator. Reasonable rate, service guaranteed. And what prompts you to feel that we need such a service? It's all very simple. You were a principal in the cast of Sweethearts in Paris. You chiseled Lou Lathrop out of 28 grand. Lou Lathrop is dead, as you already know, and you had plenty of reason to put him away. My dear fellow, your brash manner is only exceeded by the liberties you take with the English language. What makes you think I chisel anybody? Just save the oratory, Mr. Davis. You're going to need it. I'm turning you over to Inspector Pearson. Just a moment. Who are you? I am Mrs. Lathrop. Well, this is better than I expected. I didn't know that Lathrop had a wife. When did you see your husband last? I don't know what your game is, but Lou and I have been separated for three years. Mr. Davis happens to be a friend of mine. Never mind the embroidery. When did you see your husband last? I haven't seen him for six months. Mm-hmm. The police will be glad to know that you were in your husband's apartment last night. What makes you think so? This is your cigarette, isn't it? Camera? It was found in Lathrop's apartment. Incredible deduction, Mr. Shane. Except that Mrs. Lathrop happens to be only one of thousands who prefer a better class of cigarette. So I can't see what that proves. Oh, it doesn't prove anything to me, but the police might think differently. What they think doesn't interest me. It's what they can prove. Well, if they ever saw this, they could prove plenty. Yeah. Now, I'm in a position to help you. Perhaps you are. But only if you tell the truth. Now, what about this? An unfortunate circumstance. Mr. Lathrop gave me $28,000 in securities to trade for some steel. However, I saw a chance to make a handsomer property in the Hercules Rubber Company. Oh, yes. That's the company that folded when they pulled the president off the boat to South America. As Shakespeare said, who knows on whom their fortune would have smiled. You better learn a fast tap routine to that before you try it on a jury. Believe me, Mr. Shane, Julian had nothing to do with the murder. Well, I guess you got something there. It was too clever a job. But it wouldn't look so hot for the gentleman on my right if they were to find this receipt. Maybe you'd like to sell that, Mr. Shane. Oh, no. That would be unethical. Perhaps you could help us in some other way. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Do I understand that you want to hire me? Put it any way you like. All right, we'll put it this way. You are retaining me on behalf of Mr. Davis to pick up the murderer. That's satisfactory. I'll give you, a uh, hundred dollars on account. Well, if you think I'm going to say on account of what, you're crazy. There'll be four hundred more when the case is cleaned up. Oh, no, no. I turned in my Boy Scout badge fifteen years ago. This is the way I make my living. I gotta pay for this suit. 
Make it 900. That's a lot of money. You can afford it, baby. 900 or I don't take the case. Oh, very well. And one thing more. I'm turning up the murderer no matter who. All right. Well, now that we're getting so clubby, suppose you tell me what you were doing up there last night. When Julian told me it was necessary to reimburse my husband for the money he'd lost or go to jail, I decided to see you in order to verify the facts. Hmm. Checking up, huh? Well, Julian's often a little careless about business details. Hmm. I can understand that. What happened? I offered to buy the receipt. Lou refused to listen to reason, so I... I left. That's everything you know, hmm? Everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mrs. Lathrop, do you always use this kind of lipstick? Why, yes. They make some now that don't come off on glasses. Well, you'll be hearing from me. Hello, Otto. Hello, Mr. Shane. Say, Otto, maybe you can be of some help to me. You know, I haven't had a case in a long while. I'm going to get married. <laughs> sure, Mr. Sheen. What is it? There was a wine glass in front of one of those unused places up on Lathrop's table. Now, if I could be sure that a woman used that glass, it would be a swell clue. But how could they? Yes. I remember now. That woman I saw alone with Mr. Lathrop might have been drinking. What makes you say that? I saw Mr. Lithrop pouring wine for her. Oh, that's fine, I know. That's a lot of help. Anytime for you, Mr. Shin. Have a cigar. <laughs> Don't bother to smell it. It's good, I know. I didn't buy it. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Bill. Oh, Mike. You're a little off your beat, aren't you? What are you doing here? I'm watching the theater entrance of Lathrop's apartment. Just keep your shirts off, girls. By the time that curtain rings down tonight, Joan and I'll be tied tighter in a snare drum. <laughs> See you tonight. Yes. Better grab him, Joan, before he gets away. Oh, hello, honey. Well, what happened? And make it good. Now, take it easy, baby. This Lathrop case will set us up. When are we going to get hitched? Honey, we're collecting coupons. When are we going to get married? That's all I want to know. Look, I'll meet you at your room at 6 o'clock. Go down and choke yourself with a silver fox. Six o'clock. Come o on, come on. What's the matter? They play three introductions. Look, I'll see you after the matinee and be there. I don't want to take any more ribbing from the girls. Stop worrying. Come on, there. Joan. Get on there. Please, Mike, don't fight on my time. I'm not too all to myself. Here we are alone. And I can't think of a thing better than that. I'm not too all to myself. can sure lay it down. Say, tell me, do you act too? Yes, sir, we sure does. All right, then. I'm going to give you an audition. And if I like your performance, I'll give you five bucks a piece. Five bucks? Mr. Lead us to it. OK, come on. Apartment, don't it? Yeah, why? Mm -mm, not me. He and this dizzy vast was murdered here last night. No, kid. Is that so? But, boss, let's shh, take it easy. A couple of cops out in front of the apartment. rifles off the wall. Uh, the bodies are in there, isn't it? Oh, they've been sent down to more. Go on. You aren't nervous. 
nervous, are you? No, sir. But every time I take a step, one knee says to the other, get out of my way and let me pass. Mr. Shane, is this thing loaded? No, Lathrop only used them for decorations. Well, I don't want to be decorated. Hey, Rusty, give it here. Now, pull the curtains on the windows and light the candles on that table. What for, boss? That's to get you in the mood for acting. Shh. Down the Wait a minute. You're not scared, too, are you? I'm exactly scared, but my underwear is peeping up on me. Come on. Sit down there, Sam. Hey, Rusty. See that wand over in that case? Bring it here, will you? Rusty, you sit down there and rest your eyes, huh? Relax, will you? You ought to feel happy. It's the easiest five bucks you ever picked up. Elucidate me, will you, boss? What am I sitting here for? Lathrop was shot in that chair. Hmm? Now, Lathrop's dead. He can't hurt you. I can feel it. His ghost is still in you. You don't believe in ghosts, do you? Yes, sir, I do. Oh, you're crazy. Science has proven there's no such thing. The regeneration of life in this world has been entirely discredited. I still do. Look at that candle. You see anything? Yes, sir. What? Candle? No, no, no. I mean, you see anything odd about it? No, sir. OK. Now, lean forward a little. Just a little bit more. Now, do you see anything? No, sir. Oh, that's swell. I just want to make sure you couldn't see the gun. Gun? What gun? The gun that's pointing at your head. Wow! I'll take it easy. Now, I'm going to show you boys how one person can kill two birds simultaneously. You ain't going to kill me for five bucks, is you? No. Look, now, the murderer stood here with a revolver in his right hand, and with his left, he fired the rifle by pulling this wand. It's very simple, isn't it? Now, are there any more questions you boys would like to ask? When can I get out of here? That's all for the matinee. You can go right now. Hey, hey, wait a minute. You forgot your five bucks. You'll never get rich that way. Boss, right now I can make myself a fortune. Hide myself out as a vibrator. There you are. Oh, it's you, Shane. Mm -hmm. Say, that's the hit tune from Lathrop's show you were playing, isn't it? Yeah, I wrote it. In 4-4 four, four time, would it make a nice dirge for his funeral? What's on your mind, Shane? Oh, nothing. I just thought I'd drop in, toss the gab with you. Hey, what's this? 
You doing your own housework now? No, I use that to dust off guys like you. Hey, that's pretty good. I didn't know you were a magician, too. Guys gotta eat. I pick up a few extra bucks with these gadgets. It benefits some smokers. You don't need these gadgets to pick up a couple of bucks. Meaning the murder, Shane? Mm hmm Sure. I'll talk if there's anything in it. Last night, about one o'clock, I heard a shot in Lathrop's apartment. A shot? Two people were killed up there. These ears haven't gone back on me yet. My room's right under Lathrop's kitchen. What you really heard were two shots fired simultaneously. Might have been at that. A smart shame. Very oh, well. Don't spread it around. Uh, you know Lathrop quite well, didn't you? Sure. I directed music for a couple of his shows years ago. Did you ever visit his appointment? Certainly not. He never asked me. And how did you know your room was right under his kitchen? Oh, that. My nose hasn't gone back on me either. Yeah. You know anything about Carl Roth? Say, there's a guy with a real motive for a double murder. What makes you say that? He was once married to Daisy Redance. They were a popular vaudeville team before the war. Yeah, go on, go on. Well, big-hearted Lathrop went sweet on Daisy Ray and signed them up for Sweethearts of Paris. He broke up the team, made Desiree a leading lady, and gave Carlo a walk on as Beppo the dog. It wound up in Desiree leaving Carlo. When we got in the war, he went overseas. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's, that's just about the way that I figured it out. Well, I guess Carlo Ralph was our man, huh? You never miss. Well, uh, it's a gift. <laughs> There's only one hitch, smart guy. What's that? Carla Ralph was killed in Chateau Thierry in 1918. I was in his company. That's gonna cost you just two bucks. It was worth it. Desiree Vance's room. Who are you? I'm a police officer. Well, how many... Inspector Pearson sent me down. It's all right. Well, I declare, you can't tell nowadays when a policeman is and when he ain't a policeman. When I was a girl, they weren't ashamed to wear their uniforms. Yeah, that's what the chief always says. Mr. Pearson's the chief, ain't he? Yeah. Of course, we guys do all the work. He's strictly a desk man. Of course, if you have his brains, you can do it that way. Hello, Inspector. I... Hello. Where you been all day, Shane? On a West Indian cruise. What have you been doing? Oh, I was talking to... Who wants to know? Hey, what's that? I don't know. I found it in the trunk. It's locked. Say, Inspector. What? Did anybody know you were coming here? Yeah, why? A guy that would kill two people would stop at nothing. Listen. A time bomb! That's what I thought! Throw it out the window! No, no, put me in the back! Put it off! Put it in the... Hey, come here, wait! Tell who no one is? Yeah, right. All right, right. give this to Miss Joan Lamar. You got that Joan Lamar? There's your fuck, beat. Okay. What you doing? I doused it in the sewer there. Good. Mike, you saved my life. Oh, I think nothing of it, Inspector. I guess somebody thought you knew too much, huh? Yeah, Davis. Davis? Sure. Mike, I'm gonna let you in on something. We checked and found out he embezzled Lathrop out of 28 grand. There's our motive. That's so? Yeah. Well, I guess I won't be needing this anymore. Huh? Hey! 
Central Park Manor and step on it. What's the matter? Never mind what's the matter. You've got to get out of here. Come on, put your coat on. it. What is all this? Now look. The police found out about your little deal with Lathrop. I'm lucky to have him picked you up already. I'd be out my 900 bucks. Go on, hurry it up. What have you done? That hurt me much more than it did the inspector. Do you realize this porcelain vase dates back to the Ming Dynasty? You'll date back to the county jail unless you get out of here fast. Haven't you any aesthetic value Never at all? Never mind. Did I get you here quick enough? Someday you're going to get a ticket for flying too low over Broadway. Hey, Sam, you got the keys to the prop room? Yes, sir. Well, come on. Just a minute. I doesn't have to understand no more corpses, does it? Oh, come on. Yes, this ought to do very nicely. Sam, I want to hide this guy here. Now, you keep your trap closed and your eyes open. And take care of his chow. Yes, sir. Sit down. Make yourself away from home. There's a comfortable seat. W what is that strange contraption? That Hamlet is an electric chair. Might as well get used to it. Be seeing you. Oh. Sam, let's put that key where I can get it quick. Hmm? I'll put it right here, boss. Yeah. Phew, that was a narrow escape, boss. Yeah, it wasn't termites either. Come on, let's get out of here. Hello, baby. Seven o'clock. Where's the preacher? Oh, never mind about that now. Where's that box I sent you? That's your idea of a gag. Now, what did you do with it? Well, there wasn't anything in it but some pictures and a silly old love letter. A love letter? How'd you get that box open? With a hairpin. Well, where's the letter? I tore it up. You, you what? Well, I don't know any Carlo Ralph. Oh, the store that brought you should have been arrested for peddling dope. Can you tell me what's so important? But this might be the key to everything. Sure, sure. Everything's important to you but our marriage. What will the girls think? At least Gus never humiliated me. Gus. Gus, I thought you promised never to remind me of that palooka again. Well, Gus was dependable. Yeah. Yeah, listen to this. Desiree, darling, I know you'll be surprised to hear from me. The terrible ordeal of ten months in a German prison camp is finally over, but it has left its mark. You have worked on five murder cases, and how many have you solved? None. I am trying to get an act together, as I have the promise of a booking in Berlin. I live only in the hope that you'll join me here, that we may forget the past and start life together anew. Your loving husband, Carlo. Hey, can you tie that? What? This letter is postmarked Munich, Germany, 1920. And Carlo Ralph wasn't killed at Chateau Thierry. I'm through. I've had enough. I've waited and waited and waited, and what happens? Nothing. I wouldn't even expect you to show up at your own funeral. Honey, I gotta run downstairs for a minute. But mine! I'll, I'll be right back. That's what you think. Mm -hmm. Hey, Johnny. John. Oh, come on, be sensible. I'm doing this for the both of us. Hello, Inspector. Oh, uh, hello. Say, 
Don't tell me they're making keyholes big enough to get your fist through. I got this from Davis, but he'll pay plenty. I caught up with him in his apartment, and he let me have it when my back was turned. He and his gang. You don't mean he got away. I should say not. I just got an anonymous phone call that he's hiding in the theater here. Al and the boys will be along in a minute, then we'll pick him up. Here they are now. Hey! What's the matter? You going blind? What, Inspector? Shut up. Sergeant, so take a couple of men, go around the back. Al and I will go in the front. Keep your big eyes off them, will you? You look around in here, and we'll search the dressing rooms. Yes, sir. Inspector! Inspector! There he is! Stand around, shoot! I gotta keep you away from the law if I want to collect from your girlfriend. Really, Mr. Shane, this whole thing's getting on my nerves. Look, after I catch the murderer, you can have a nervous breakdown if you like. Mm. Keep quiet. Well, sit down, ease your mind. Looks like we're stuck for a while until I figure some way of getting you out of here. You play honeymoon bridge? <laughs> Do I play honeymoon bridge? I shall never forget the time we were stranded in Chillicotte. We were playing Romeo and Juliet at the time, and the scenery went to Cleveland by mistake. Oh, looks like the police checked this room already. By the way, if you want to leave here, I have a suggestion to make. Yeah? There's another way out. You mean to say there's another entrance to this homicide, Paul? If you knew Lou as well as I did, you wouldn't question it. Lou always insisted on taking a fatherly interest in his leading lady. So to facilitate matters, he arranged she should occupy the suite immediately below. Well, for the love of Michael Shane. Oh, come on. She, she looks like, um... Lynn Evans? Yes. That's who it is. 
But how could she? Is she dead? Yep. To whoever finds me, I kill Lou Lathrop and Desiree Vance. Lou is my first sweetheart, and she came between us. I've never forgotten or forgiven either of them. Last night was too much for me. I couldn't stand it. I killed them. Lynn Evans. Why, this ends our case, Mr. Shane. I can go home now. Oh, no, no. You're going to stay right here with me. Why? She didn't commit suicide. What do you mean? Come on, I'll explain it to you later. Hey, Joe. Joni. She's going yeah. again. You can never trust these dames. Hello. Hello, give me the backstage of the Athena Theater. Life is full of strange adventures. Here I find myself in a girl's room. A beautiful girl whom I've never even met. Now just take it easy, Hamlet. She'll be a blustering bride before midnight. Is that so? And when she comes back, tell her to wait here for me, will you? Oh, hello, Otto. This is Mike Shane. Hello, Mr. Shane. Otto, there's one more thing I want you to do for me. Can you meet me in Lathrop's apartment? Why, yes, Mr. Shane. Uh, but I can't get away from here until 9 o'clock when the relief man comes on. Oh, that's all right. That's fine. Just a little more help, and I think we got this solved. I'll meet you there at 9 o'clock. I'll be there. Now, you wait here until I pick up the murderer. You've got plenty of time for that nervous breakdown now. Come in. Hello, Max. Oh, it's you again. Mm-hmm. You turned up the Lathrop killer yet, Shane? Max, you lied to me about Carlo Ralph being killed in the war. I think. I wouldn't lie to a smart guy like you. Listen, you know plenty. Well, I'm cracking this case pretty quick, and I'm getting the last bit of evidence in Lathrop's apartment at 9 tonight. Well, have a good night's sleep. Hello, Shane. We've got a little date downtown. Oh, now, wait a minute, Al. I got this whole thing sewed up. Look, the inspector gave me his yeah. personal yeah. okay. Yeah. He's going to be yeah. awfully yeah. sore with yeah. Thought you were pretty smart, eh, Shane? You know I wanted Davis for murder, and you helped him get away. I'm going to send you up for a nice long stretch. You almost sent me up for good when you took that pot shot at me in the theater. What pot shot? I didn't fire my gun. Well, somebody did. The bullet almost parted my hair. Did you fire at him, Al? Not me. I heard a shot, but I thought it was you, Inspector. Uh, now, wait a minute. If neither one of you fired, doesn't that prove that the murderer was in the theater? You know, it couldn't have been Davis. He was right by my side the whole time. Now, wait a minute, Shane. It's simple arithmetic, Inspector. Whoever the real murderer is, he's trying to pin it on to Davis. That half-burned receipt was a plant and a clumsy one at that. And who do you think called you up and told you Davis was down at the theater? Search me. It was the killer, of course. Here's another one for your scrapbook. You can pick up the body of the third victim at room 516. What? Emily, the maid at the hotel, was murdered. This is the screwiest case I've ever had. Lock him up, Al, before I'm murdered. Well, now, wait a minute, Inspector. I'll make you a proposition. Nothing doing. Now, listen to now, me, will you? I think that I've made a date with a killer at Lathrop's apartment at 9 p.m. Shane, you've played your last trick on me. I got nothing up my sleeve. If I'm wrong, I'll turn Davis over to you in a pair of ruby-studded handcuffs. Now, is that fair enough? I don't know. Well, you'll hog all the front pages. Inspector Pearson at the homicide picks up triple killer in 24 hours. Now, you wouldn't object to that, would you? Frankly, no. That would suit me fine. But you never deliver. I will this time. Here's all you got to do. You get up to Lathrop's apartment before 9 o'clock. Plant yourself in the study behind those glass doors. And where are you going? Oh, stop worrying. I'll be there. Ah, oh, no, you don't. All right, then have Al stick with me, OK? And when you get up there, keep your gun ready. When you hear me mention the time, 12 o'clock, that's your signal. What do you mean, 12 o'clock? When I say 12 o'clock, you step out and nail them. Okay. Add up, boy. But you better be right. I'll call the corner and have him meet me at the Do North. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, you better take the cop off the theater entrance. I got a hunch the murderer may be coming up that way. All right. But if I get comped in the eye again, look out!
516. Say, ain't this the room the maid was murdered in? That's right. Hey. Hey, shh. Where are you going? Up to Lathrop's apartment to meet the killer. It's open house if you want to come along. No, I'd better stay down here and watch. Get back, Inspector. I can see your shadow. Hello, Mr. Sheen. Hello, Otto. Not too loud, huh? Come on, sit down. I'm sorry I couldn't get here sooner, Mr. Sheen. Oh, that's all right. It's nice of you to help me out. Oh. You know, Otto, I think I've almost got this figured out. Just one link in the chain missing. If I could get that. How can I help you? You must have read in the papers that Lathrop was killed with a rifle and the van stain with a revolver. Now, I can understand why they didn't see the rifle. But what beats me is why they didn't scream or jump up or do something when the killer pulled a revolver on them. Well, why wouldn't they seize a rifle, Mr. Sheen? Because the murderer had clamped it to that sill over there. The end of the barrel was hidden under that candlestick. How do you know that? When the rifle went off, it left a burn. The murderer tried to make believe it was done by a cigarette. What? But the killer tried to make it appear it was from a cigarette. But no cigarette ever made a burn like that. Ah. <laughs> that's wonderful, Mr. Shin. Well, that's what I get paid for. <laughs> now, the murderer stood here, and he fired the rifle by rigging the trigger to this wand with magician's thread. Oh. That's very clever. Yeah, isn't it? Ah, let me see it. Sure. Hmm. You know any magic tricks, Otto? Huh? Do you know any magic tricks? No, I don't, but uh, I've seen them do it in theaters. Maybe it was done like that. Say, that's pretty good. I think maybe you've hit it. I'm going to kill you, Mr. Sheen. Why, Otto? Why should you kill me? You know too many things. I know that you're Carla Ralph. Yeah. Maple's a dog. And that you kill Lathrop, Desiree Vance, and Lynn Evans. You are the only one who will ever know that, Mr. Shane. Now, don't get excited, Otto. After all, you probably thought you had plenty of reasons for doing what you did. I don't get excited. I had the feeling you were too smart. And you asked me about that wine glass. Yes, that's right, Otto. You were a big help there. That's the first time I got suspicious of you, when you lied to me. Mrs. Lathrop didn't drink out of that glass. There wasn't any lipstick on it. It was you who drank from it. Yes. I came up here last night for sentimental reasons. I put on the dog head and waited until Lathrop and Desiree were the only ones left. <coughs> Lathrop was panicky when he recognized me. But after I convinced him I meant no harm. He poured me a glass of wine and asked me to sit down. I showed him some of the tricks I did in the show. Well, how come that Lathrop didn't recognize you before? He knew me as I was in 1916. But the year of war and a German prison camp can change any man. I passed him in the street one day, but he didn't recognize me. Oh, so that's it. I decided Lathrop should die in the same place he closed my life 26 years back. 
And he stole my wife. So, uh, about six months ago, I uh, got this job. Yeah, but why did you kill Lynn Evans? I came back to destroy the wine glass you asked me about. There were police all over. So I had to sneak through the room downstairs. Emily saw me. So I caught her and, and choked her. After her head fell back and her glassy eyes stared at me, I realized what I had done. I lit some candles and and said a prayer. I don't think I get to say any prayers over you. Now, take it easy, Otto. You've been awfully smart about this up till now. Why do you want to spoil it all? Look, I can promise to have it fixed so you can be on a boat to South America. It's nice down there. The boat leaves at 12 o'clock. I'm not going to take any trip. Only you. The boat leaves at 12 o'clock. You can start life all over again. I've got the money here with me. Keep your hands on the table. Now, don't be a fool, Otto. I promise you. I'll have you on that boat before 12 o'clock. No, no. I don't trust nobody. I used to trust everybody. I'm going to kill you, Mr. Sheen. And then there's only one more to put out of the way. Who's that? What's going on here? Alaron. They saw have knocked me out. Do you mean to say that he's the guy that was standing behind those doors? Yeah. Oh, so that's why... Well, is my face a nasty color of pink? And is my head sore? All right, now take it easy, Pop. Look, is that the one more guy you wanted to put away? Yes. He heard the shot last night and rushed up here as I was putting the rifle back on the wall. He's crazy. You can't believe anything he says. Shut up. He made me pay all the money I had to keep quiet. I knew if I didn't get him, he, he'd make me pay him for the rest of my life. Well, what a dummy I was. I practically gave you an invitation to come up here and kill me. You knew you'd get 20 years of Otto ever talked. Suppression of evidence. That's right. And you saw a chance to do away with the both of us. Why, Inspector, you saved my life. Think nothing of it. I don't. Put the cuffs on this guy and take them both to headquarters. Holy smoke! Say, Inspector! What time is it? Ten after nine. Why? Come on, we gotta get going. What's the matter? Is there more work on this case? You don't know it, but you're gonna be best man at my wedding. More murder. Trying to sneak up on me again. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Now, calm down, will you, Inspector? I just cleared Davis. What are you doing here? Your girlfriend came back and threw me out. I've been waiting for you. You can just run home to that sweet patootie of yours and tell her to get 900 bucks ready. I'll be up for it in an hour. Come on, Chief. Mr. Shane, wait a minute. Yeah? Who killed Lathrop? Santa Claus ran over him with his sleigh. <laughs> That's funny. It's four months to Christmas. Hey, Mike. Yeah? Are you sure you want to get married? Of course I am. Uh, oh, now, Inspector, be frank. Haven't you ever felt the urge to hold some sweet little sugar that belongs to you close in your arms? Yeah, lots of times. When I feel that way, I just run around the block. Oh, you'd find rest on the pearly gates. There we are, the gate to heaven. Looks like you ain't got the only key to this gate. Hey, what are you doing here? Are you Mr. Shane? Yes, why? Oh. I got a singing telegram for you from Miss Joan Lamar. Oh, what is she? 
I'm tired of all this fight and fuss, so I took it on the lamb with Gus. Goodbye forever. Goodbye forever. Goodbye, goodbye.